Mushroom Wonderland. How's it going everyone? My name is Aaron Hilliard for Mushroom Wonderland. I'm the creator of Mushroom Wonderland here on YouTube and on Instagram. So today we're gonna to be talking about four wild mushrooms that you can find and identify for yourself to take home to the dinner table. You can find these mushrooms growing in your own backyard or in your driveway. So come along with me to look at some footage that I haven't shown before and hit subscribe to the channel if you're new so that you can see more videos like this. And if you give it a thumbs up, that helps the channel to grow and to promote this video. And if you leave a positive comment, I always love to hear what you're finding in your neck of the woods. These mushrooms are not necessarily growing as you're watching this video. They're autumn loving mushrooms. These are some of my favorite mushrooms growing here in Western Washington. We're gonna be taking a look at the Birch Bolete, at the Shaggy Mane. We're gonna be looking at the Bluet and at the Porcini. These are four of the best wild edible mushrooms in my personal opinion, and some of the easiest ones to identify for yourself to take back to your dining room. So come with me, Aaron Hilliard on Mushroom Wonderland, and let's go check out these mushrooms. Thanks for joining. Hey, what's going on? This is Aaron Hilliard, Mushroom Wonderland, and today we're gonna to be looking at a pretty common edible mushroom that grows here in the PNW. Grows all over the place, grows in Europe too. And uh, this is known as the birch bolete. Um, pretty common, especially common in Europe. And uh, this mushroom grows only in association with birch trees. So kind of an interesting mushroom, but uh, its scientific name is Lecinum scabrum or Lecanum scabrum. And so let's take a look at this mushroom. It can often grow in urban areas and is known as a ectomycorrhizal mushroom. So this only grows with birch and uh, it's kind of interesting that way. It doesn't like other trees and it's pretty easy to identify and also known as a good edible. So I'm going to flip this camera and we'll take a look at these birch bolites or Lacinum scabrum. And you can tell this mushroom because it's got all these little hairs on the stipe. Um, also known as scabers. And then if we are to look underneath, I'm gonna pick this guy out of here. If we look underneath, you can definitely see the pore surface that's indicative of uh, a type of bolete. It has a couple of lookalikes, none of which are poisonous, but uh, these ones are pretty easy to identify because of this scabered stalk this kind of tan surface and you can see these three are growing in this nice little cluster and up behind this maple tree is a birch tree so it's growing in mycorrhizal connection with that birch and it's actually its roots are um, coming underground and then the mycelium from this mushroom is connected to the tips of those roots and so the tree is feeding these mushrooms and in turn the mushroom is breaking down materials and then feeding nutrients to the trees so it's quite a relationship they got going on here but look at the fatness of this stalk here so in in europe these are really popular edibles and uh here in the united states they're definitely not as desirable as the boletus edulis but still a pretty decent edible they make a good soup um, so if you're looking for this particular mushroom, go find yourself some birch trees. But a beautiful wild bolete here in the Pacific Northwest, an ectomycorrhizal mushroom, a beautiful bolete, so to speak. I've come across a mushroom that is a pretty desirable edible and one that's pretty easy to spot because it really likes walkways and public areas, gravel roads and stuff, lawns. So let's take a look at this. Right down here on this gravel driveway, just coming up the road is these beautiful little white shaggy looking mushrooms. And let me pick one of those. There you go. You can see why I call it shaggy. It's got all these scales that are hanging off. And that's actually the most popular common name is the shaggy mane or the Caprinus camatus. Um, another name for it is the lawyer's wig. Uh, 
I kind of like that one, the lawyer's wig. I think that's awesome. We should call this the lawyer's wig instead of the shaggy mane. But this is a popular edible mushroom. You can see we got a few of them growing here. And uh, they are in the family Agaricaceae in the genus Caprinus. And the species is Comatus. And so they um, are a beautiful little mushroom. They're really white and cylindrical shape, the way that they pop out of the ground. And they've got these scales hanging all over them, and that's how they get their name, the shaggy mane. And uh, they often will grow in large numbers, big, huge clusters. And they're a relatively fragile mushroom. So here's our shaggy manes, and you can see how easily this breaks. It's a, it's a very fragile mushroom. And as we look inside of here, we'll see that it's got some white gills underneath there they have this ring on the stem when they get a little bit more mature and this is an example of a very mature one and it starts to become quite ugly you see it's turning kind of this tannish brown color and by the end of today this is going to turn into ink it just liquefies into this black sticky ink stuff and i've got another example of a very mature one Ew, and it's very nasty, very slimy stuff. So you do not want to eat this at this age, right? By the end of the day, this will completely liquefy. In fact, that one will probably liquefy. And uh, these three kind of fresh ones would probably be there by tomorrow afternoon. So very short little shelf life. Look at the little skirts have fallen down on these. It's like their pants fell down. This one's hanging on to its skirt, but... Uh, this little ring, you can see it's very movable. It's just gonna fall down the stem as it liquefies more. So, Caprinus comatus, or the shaggy mane. And you can often find these grown in big numbers in big clusters that are just erupting out of the gravel. Um, and a lot of people really like to eat these ones. I've had them when they were delicious. I've also had them and they took on a very like chemical type flavor, which I found very off-putting. So keep in mind where you're finding these next to the path might be getting peed or pooped on by dogs or people, even worse. Being that they're kind of an urban mushroom and they like roads and stuff, they're subject to contamination. And they really do suck up a lot of stuff out of the earth and that includes chemicals, urine, those kind of things. So um, eat them with caution. I've also found big clusters of them growing out in cow pastures and really pristine grass. So that's a beautiful thing when you find that. And these can be a really, really good edible, pretty unmistakable look to them. So the shaggy mane or the lawyer's wig or Caprinus comatus related to other species of inky type mushrooms that will turn inky and that's the turn into a black sticky ink when they get over mature. So they do have a pretty pleasant smell to them. Kind of almondy, I don't know, kind of nutty. How many mushrooms get described like that? So the shaggy mane is a good one to find just growing on the gravel around your house or in your driveway. And uh, you can find these in big numbers and cook them up. And like with most mushrooms, just try a little bit at first to see if it's going to upset your stomach. The shaggy mane, beautiful common wild mushroom here in the Northwest. Coming down the trail, and uh, I see these two mushrooms nestled in here next to this tree root. And they've got this color that looks kind of familiar to me. So we're gonna pluck one of these and see what we got here. Oh, kind of broke. See that underneath? This is a uh, Clydosobe nuda or Lapista nuda or the uh, wood bluet, and it's growing right here. Western Washington, a couple hundred feet above sea level. So this is a really pretty mushroom, and some people really like to eat these ones. Uh, other people think they're just too strong, or they have kind of a weird texture. Pretty chewed up by bugs and stuff. So we might leave these, and if we run across some fresher ones, uh, well, I don't know, this one's pretty nice. Look at that guy. Uh, flesh looks fine in there, no worms, so. Definitely, it smells like a can of frozen orange juice. That is crazy. And then I guess there's another variety that doesn't smell quite like orange juice. 
and you can still eat it, but, uh, but a lot of people just don't, don't like that one. So, uh, yeah, this is a interesting mushroom of the Clydosopy family. Not a lot of, um, not a lot of valuable edibles in that genus, but, uh, but this one is pretty renowned world round, um, as a somewhat good mushroom. So this is a later season mushroom and it grows here in the PNW and this is uh, saprotrophic mushrooms so this is just growing on decaying matter just happens to be growing right next to a tree root here in this uh, mixed conifer forest here uh, so pretty little mushrooms definite interesting smell and so the uh, the wood bluets are coming home and we're gonna cook them up and see what we got there so let me give you a little rundown of what kind of environment I look in right in the Puget Sound uh, about 300 feet from sea level and as you can see here there's like hem fur and uh, huckleberries and salal you know it took me like 22 years of foraging to finally find a patch if you find porcini mushrooms keep it a secret and go back there next year and check it um, chances are you're gonna find them in the same spot again the next year so here's a king look at the size of that guy let me I get the whole root and everything. Look at how perfect that guy is. That's a beauty. That, that is a beautiful King Belit Porcini mushroom. I mean, this is like a day or two old, probably. There is not. The insects haven't even discovered it yet. Some of the identifying characteristics of the Belita sedulis is going to be this kind of tan colored cap that looks a little bit like bread. I think that's why it's called a penny bun. Uh, the stipe or the big stump, the stem on this mushroom has what's called reticulation. So it can look a little bit like spider webbing, kind of a veiny texturing on the stem. And then most importantly is underneath the cap is going to have a pore surface of really tight, small white pores um, as opposed to gills or larger yellow pores like on the suillus. Oh, another beauty. Okay, up here. Another beauty. Right up here. There's a big monster right over here. Another beauty, another beauty. So you see where this one's growing. And look just to the right of it. There's another big one, big stump on this guy. Pull it up. Ooh, it's a thick little guy. Beautiful. Beauty. So here we go. Check out check out this. Look at how pretty that guy is. Here we found his friend. Right there. Ooh. You look at these. It's the most wonderful time of the year. So uh, here's our find for the day. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty good amount of bleats right there. These big ones, probably dehydrate those um, for a cream of mushroom soup. And we'll just make some, uh, make some powder out of those. But these ones, steaks, Italian food, um, sauteed, grilled, whatever you want, man. These are my favorites. So it was a good day. I hope you got some value out of that video. These are four wild mushrooms that I find dear to my heart that are delicious and I like to collect and take home to the table. So thanks for joining Mushroom Wonderland. If you're not a subscriber yet, hit that subscribe button and we will see you on the next episode. Much love, people.